the infamous Bergheim. Some people love it and some hate it. Mostly the ones that don't get in. But how exactly did become Bergheim the most famous club in the entire world? Well, you're about to find out, but first, let's have a look at the history. Bergheim, as it is today, exists since 2004, but the brand, for what it stands, is much older than that. Bergheim's story begins in the early 90s, when techno was still young and being gay was not really accepted yet in our society. The gay club promoters, Michael Teufle and Norbert Foreman, have been throwing their snacks parties in various locations around Berlin. Those snacks parties were a mix between a hardcore techno rave and a sex party. At that time, there was not really a proper space for young gay men to indulge their desires. So they created these events for them to do as they liked without being judged. Of course, it was all happening underground and unofficially. Then came 1998 and they were offered to move to a permanent location on a vast industrial lot. They moved into a factory building that has been used to repair trains before. The name of the new club was Ostgut. And even though they kept organizing snacks parties, most evenings revolved around offering quality techno to an audience that was both gay and straight. Ostgut was an immediate success being at the epicenter of the underground techno scene. Over the next few years, they expanded the brand and created the Panorama Bar on the upper floors, which focused on softer techno and house that drew somewhat of a more mainstream crowd. At the same time, the club Lab Oratory, which was run in the very same space, came into existence. It was focused on gay men whose sexual activities were a bit too extreme to coexist with the mainstream crowd. Dale Yen Wang, a resident DJ at the time said, there were dark rooms, chains, swings and corners where men explored each other sexually. I remember one night when an entire room was filled with mud. Naked guys were dancing around, had sex with each other and acted like pigs. It took a month to clean up in there. And then came 2003. Ostgut had to make space for Berlin's new world arena. The owners were forced out and had to look for a new location. And did they find one? After the closing of Ostgut, the makers had to take a choice. Techno now slowly became a business. The underground got more and more professionalized. The forerunner club Ostgut was born out of need to find a place for young gay men to do whatever they want. It was always an illegal undertaking. Even at Ostgut there was no company and no rent contract. Now was the time to get serious. On a lot not too far from the old Ostgut there was a power plant owned by Swedish energy giant Vattenfall. The plant had been taken out of service and what was left was a raw concrete structure from the 1950s that had everything Teufle and Tormann were looking for. A new legend was about to be born. The infamous Bergheim. The turbine room with its 20 meter high ceilings became the main Bergheim floor. That combined with the industrial ambience and the powerful bass created something very powerful that didn't exist anywhere else. Today, Berghain is considered the world's most legendary club. There have been surely many contributing factors getting it there. But the most important one, in addition to the location, is that they created a space of absolute privacy and no judgment. And that is exactly what the people outside the door are for. That's why they have such a strict door policy. And that's why you need to put stickers on your camera when you go in. Because not everybody is open-minded. And not everybody understands. Without a strict door policy, Berghain couldn't be what it is today. With all of this in place, Berghain can be known by everyone and still be underground. This is what it makes it so special. 
If you run a business like that for many years and it's successful, of course, at some point, it will become a mythology. That's how Burkhan got where it is today. And that's why there are three hour long queues every weekend. Burkhain surely did the right thing at the right time, but its fame is well deserved. Anyone who has ever been inside can tell you that. And believe me, all the rumors are true. Thank you.